Okay, so uh, let's get started. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to present the, um, the causality, uh, which is a part of the graphical model course we, we, we are uh, continuing to learn it. Uh, but this, uh, this, this chapter is given, it, it, actually it is a guest lecture for that course. It, it is given by Professor Kun Zhang. Uh, he's also from uh, CMU. And uh, uh, my slides is not just adapted from Professor Zhang's slides, but also another source. And I put it here. If you are interested, you can check these two references for more detailed uh, slides. Uh, and uh, before we started, uh, actually for causality, there are two fundamental uh, problems in causality. The first one is causal inference, which means that we uh, we have somehow a treatment and we want to know the effect of the of a treatment. Uh, we want to infer the effect of the treatment. That is the ca causal inference. And the second one is uh, causal discovery. Uh, basically, it means that we want to, uh, uh, we have a lot of ob observations uh, and we have a lot of uh, variable observations and we want to learn the causal direction and causal relation between uh, from the uh, from the, the the observational data, uh, but I remember last year when I present the a paper book of causal discovery. It seems that mm, not everyone is, uh, maybe most most of you guys, and <laughs> are not interested in the causal discovery. So today, I am I will just present the causal inference part. And if uh, like if um, some of you are interested in the causal discovery. Maybe I can present it later, uh, but today is only uh, causal inference. Uh, okay, uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to present three parts. The first one is motivation part. Uh, actually, we have uh, talked about this um, maybe for several times, but since since it is a motivation, so let's go it. Uh, let's go over it, go over it again. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, we know that causality basically means that for, uh, for one variable or one uh, event, it can cause the exist existence or the change of another variable, another event. Uh, the, the, the other uh, the other relation or the other uh, terminology uh, uh, we we usually use is uh, dependence or uh, Let's say a uh, correlation or uh, association, uh, but in this in this course, uh, the you know Professor Zhang used uh, deep dependency, so uh, we 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 will uh, follow his terminology and use the dependence. Uh, the depend the causality actually again means that that some something can cause another thing. So uh, if something can cause another thing, then definitely those two variables or those two events they are. Depend, they are dependent, right? So we know that the causality is definitely one kind of dependence. However, for a general dependence, it doesn't mean they are causality, right? Uh, there are a lot of examples, but uh, for example, if you see, uh, uh, yeah, if, if you, let's say, let's say COVID, uh, and uh, uh, we, we know that, it, that the virus, uh, it, it, uh, broke out, so so uh, we know that many people got COVID, and many people will Google COVID. Okay, so we can see that the uh, the volume of of co uh, the volume of uh, query of COVID on Google is is very high, and the uh, number of uh, COVID cases is also high. But those two variables, they are. Uh, Association or they are dependence. Uh, they are not. They are not the causality because if you, uh, you know, uh, as human, we know that they are not. They are not causality because not. If not because we search on Google about the COVID, then the COVID is uh, broke out. No, but, but uh, they are both. Those two uh, observations. Those two variables are both caused by the virus. Uh, but yeah, they, they are dependency because you can see the 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 search on Google, uh, 
just, okay, more people search on Google, then uh, we also observe that more people get COVID. So they are correlation, but there, there, there's no causality. Now that's the difference uh, between causality and dependence. Uh, here are some uh, formal definition maybe. And for uh, associated, uh, if x, y, if x and y, there are two variables, and if uh, and only if uh, there are exist two different uh, values, uh, x one and x two, and uh, uh, conditional on uh, on the x uh, get the value x one or x two, the the probability, the conditional probability of y is different under these two cases uh, under these two conditions. Uh, then we see this, the y and x are associated because, uh, you know, because they have a different, uh, the, the y also, uh, the, the probability of y also different conditional on a different x, so they are associated. Uh, that's the, the definition of association or dependence. But for causality, for cause, uh, we will say x is a cause of y if and only if uh, the only the only difference bet between the uh, the association and the the uh, causality in the formal definition is the the for the format of the condition. Uh, previously, we just assign we just say okay x equals to uh, some value x one or x two, but here we use another uh, operator which we call it as do operator or do calculus. Uh, the two calculus is uh, proposed by uh, a, a famous professor in our department, Professor Yuda Pro. Uh, the do basically means that we force x equals to something, or we intervene x equal to something, or we assign x to something. For example, uh, I can say, okay, uh, I, okay, I will uh, sh shut down the Google server, then you cannot search. You cannot search COVID on, on Google. That's a uh, intervention. That's 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 a do calculus that we uh, do something. We intervene something. Uh, okay. The for, the formal the formal uh, yeah the formal the, the formula is something like this. Then we uh, do x equals to some value. Uh, this is different from the association x equals to equals to x one because in the association. Uh, x equals to x y is just one observation. We say we have a lot of data, and some of them in some of the the data instance instance x equals to x one, and others may equals to x two, x three, or others. We we can just you know filter filter those filter filter those data from the all the observational data. But for uh, for for here the do calculus is that. We, okay, we have some observation, but we don't care. We we intervene the x again and see what will happen and why, and that's the do calculus. Uh, and if you know, if we assign, we do x equals to x one, and we do x equals to x two. Somehow we have two different interventions, and in this case, under these two interventions, the y will be different. That means that if we can we manually change x, then y will have some um, change or difference. That tells us then x can cause y because we change x, and then y will something different of y will happen. Uh, that's the uh, formal definition of uh, x cause y. Uh, and here, uh, there are some classic ways to find the causal information. Uh, let's say the left, the left cases is that, uh, okay, we have two variables. One is the weather, maybe the temperature. And the second is the, or let's say the sales of ice cream. Okay, we want to, we want to know, uh, and we can observe that if the, uh, if the, uh, the weather is, is hot and then the sales of ice cream is also high. Uh, this is what we can observe, but uh, suppose we want to, uh, you know, we want to know it is which one caused another one. As, uh, what, what we should do as a human, we know 
okay, we have some knowledge, so we know that it is weather uh, caused the sales of ice cream. But uh, suppose we don't know that. Mm, what, what should we do? Uh, how can we know uh, it is weather caused ice cream or, or the other? Uh, an easy way and an ideal way that we can come up with is that, okay, if I just use the do calculus, if I ma manipulate or I uh, intervene on, on one of them and I will see what will happen on the others. Uh, and, and if we can do this, then for example, if we can you know, make the temperature very high, we can do this, then we can observe that whether the sales of ice cream will also be high. If it is, then okay, it is causal. And then suppose we adjust, you know, increase the sales of ice cream. Would it have what will happen for the weather? We know that nothing will happen. So uh, by by doing this uh, manipulate, then we can know uh, we can know uh, the causal yeah the causal relation uh, the causal direction between those two variables, weather and uh, ice cream. Uh, but uh, but uh, uh, sometimes uh, in, in this case, we can know because the weather, uh, the underlying truth is that weather can uh, can cause the sales of ice cream. But uh, for, some, for some cases like the association cases, uh, for example, here, uh, for it, it is that when a, a bus will come and the uh, there's this boy will go go outside to take the bus. Uh, okay, there are two. Let's say there are two uh, observation uh, observable variables of the when will the bus come and when will the boy go outside. Uh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Uh, we can see that. Uh, they, these two variables, they are very close because, yeah, because the boy wants to take the bus. But uh, uh, if we change one of them, uh, what will happen to the others? We we know that nothing will happen. Okay, like if we do, if we use a do, do operator on the bus, or if we use the do operator on the boy, not, uh, nothing will happen on the other because they are not causal relation. Uh, the, the underlying causal is that the bus timetable, the bus time, if we change the, change the bus timetable, then uh, we know that uh, the bus will come in another time and the boy will go outside in another time. Uh, so this is also, so if uh, that means that if we change bus or change the boy, uh, nothing will happen. So we know they are not uh, causal relation. Yeah, so this is the classic way that can find the causal information, uh, and it work. It can work either. Uh, it can work either. You know, those two variables are causal. They are. They have causal relation, or they not, uh, because uh, intervention or manip manipulation is the is the ideal way to do this. Uh, but yeah, uh, the the. Uh, the, the problem is that you cannot always do this because, well, for example, you, how, how can you, you know, intervene the, the weather is not very easy, uh, but that's not the problem we want to uh, focus now. Uh, there's another uh, interesting study in causality is the, it's called the uh, Simpson, Simpson's paradox. Uh, it, it, it describes another uh, phenomena in causal. Uh, and this study was done many years ago, and uh, I forgot the, the concrete scenario, but uh, it basically, it, it is a study of many patients. And uh, for these patients, they have a disease. Uh, the disease is, is about, um, you know, maybe the patient will have, will have some stone in, in one of their uh, liver or stomach or, or, or others, I forgot, but uh, it is, they, ha they have stones in their body. Uh, and uh, uh, the stones has, has a property is the size. The stone can be small or, or large. Uh, and uh, the doctors have two different treatment plans. 
uh, let's say treatment A and treatment B. Uh, and uh, uh, because they have a lot of uh, patients and then they record what's the size of, of one patient and what uh, and which treatment plan did this treatment of uh, this patient receive. And uh, they also record the recovery uh, rate or the survival rate. So the data is uh, posting proposed here the four uh, yeah this four four groups of patients and uh, okay now our question is uh, our question is that we want to know treatment A and treatment B which one which which treatment plan is good is better uh, based on this observation of observational data a uh, very simple way is that. Okay, a, a very straightforward way is that, okay, I just say the, the uh, average, the average or, or the, the total, not average, the total uh, survival rate of all the patients who receive treatment A and uh, all the treatment which who receive, all the patients who receive treatment B, which I, we, we can just compare this to survival rate and say uh, which one is larger or which one is higher. Uh, and if we see this, it is very easy to see it is treatment B because treatment B is 83% and treatment A is only 78%. Uh, however, is this the truth? Uh, it, it is not because when we, because when we uh, analyze the, uh, when we analyze the data in detail, we can see that, um, the small size, uh, the the size of the stone, actually will affect which treat which treatment plan the patient will select. Let's say for all the for all the patients who only have uh, small stones, let's say twenty uh, most of them two hundred and seventy of them select the uh, treatment B, and only small of them uh, uh, chose A. But for the larger stone group, uh, most of them chose treatment A, and only small part, part small portion of them select treatment B. Okay, so so, and we can also easily to think that for a patient who has larger stone, then the survival rate, because, which means that the disease of this patient is is severe. So. The survival rate, the survival probability of this patient could be lower than a patient who has a small stone, right? Uh, yeah, that's the that's the uh, yeah that's the nature of this of this of this disease. Uh, but if we focus, if we focus uh, one one group, this group means. Uh, patients who have the same size of stone, let's say the small stone group, uh, let's say treatment A, the recovery, the recovery rate is 93 percent, pretty high, but treatment B will just be uh, 87 percent. And if we see the larger, the larger stone group, treatment A will be 73 percent, and uh, treatment B is also lower than than uh, than the treatment A. Okay, so if we focus on each, each uh, here, if we focus on each, uh, each, each patient group who, uh, with, re with respect to the, the size of the stone, then we can say it is treatment A is better than B because in, in, uh, you know, either of the, the, the stone size, then treatment A will have a higher recovery rate of than, than treatment B. But if we took the, to the total average, then, then you know, the treatment B is higher. This is the S Simpson paradox. But in, so let's say, you know, the, the numbers some, sometimes tell, not tell, they, they don't tell people the truth. And uh, the reason, so what, what, why could this paradox happen? The reason is that we, in the first cases, we only focus on, we only observe the treatment plan and the recovery. We don't consider other factors. 
But actually, there is another factor, which is the stone size that can both affect the treatment plan and the, the treatment plan choice and the recovery. Okay, so uh, if we draw it in a graph, you know, let's say in a, in a directed graph and base uh, and each edge means, uh, uh, each mean, means, uh, uh, let's say causal, causal relation between those two variables and the treatment A uh, and the treatment plan and the recovery, they are observed. But stone size, in the first cases, we don't consider the stone size. So it can be considered as unobserved, hidden. Uh, so in that case, we will have some wrong conclusion that treatment B is better. But if we consider, if we take the stone size into consideration, and we can we do just a, a simply uh, we, we can just do a simple weight uh, a weight uh, let's say weight average. Okay, then we can see uh, we we can get you know the the uh, or, or, or not not we uh, I mean we can uh, compare those two treatment plans in every uh, group. Okay, in, or in every uh, value of the of the stone size, then we can get a you know different conclusion. But that conclusion actually is the the, the true conclusion is the correct con conclusion. So we can see the the reason of this paradox is be is because the existence of the stone size this factor and this factor it can both affect the treatment choice and the recovery and then Later on, we know that in causality, we call such a kind of variables as a confounder. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This just the motivation part is that you know, based on if we only based on some observation and on based on some uh, condition uh, condition probability prediction or something, then sometimes we can get. Sometimes our prediction, our conclusion is not the correct conclusion. So we need to somehow use a causal way to, to solve those problems. Yeah, that's the motivation part. And then uh, the second part is about the causal graph and the structural causal model. Mm, this is more related to the graphical model discourse. Uh, first is that uh, you know, we, we have, we, let, let's say we, we, we know, suppose we know the uh, causal relations between some variables, then uh, there is, we need some way to represent the causal relation. And, uh, you know, in graphical model, then we can just put the variables as a node, and then we can put an uh, edge, a, a, a directed edge between two variables, then it is, and we, uh, we let this edge means uh, causal, then we can draw such a direct, directed graph. And uh, in this graph, the edge means, uh, okay, suppose there is an edge from A to B, then uh, it means that A uh, is a direct cause of B. Yeah, then, and this, this kind of graph is called a causal graph. Uh, but that's what we know about a causal graph. Uh, let's go back to a general uh, general uh, Bayesian network because cost graph we can say the kind of cost of uh, Bayesian network, but it's not it it still has it still have uh, it still has some difference from the uh, the general Bayesian network because in a general Bayesian network uh, let's say it is a deck and for a deck uh, for for an edge in a deck. What does it mean in a general Bayesian network? Uh, yeah, actually, sometimes we, you know, we build the Bayesian network based on the generative process of the variables. Let's say we first generate A, and then based on A, our conditional on A, we generate variable B, C, D, or others. Uh, this actually, if we build the cause of the Bayesian network in such a way following the generative process, 
then uh, it is somehow we we can you know intuitively we know that it actually it is the causal graph. But for a general Bayesian network, it doesn't to it it doesn't need to 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 you know to uh, I mean we we don't need to build the causal we don't need to build the Bayesian network from the generative process. We can build it just model the their conditional uh, dependency between the variables. So in a general Bayesian network, the edge uh, one edge is only model one edge only models the uh, conditional dependency between two variables. So what makes a general Bayesian network to a causal Bayesian network? Okay, easy way is that okay, you just mean the edge being causal. Uh, okay, that's fine. But uh, we have some uh, some formal definition. Uh, remember that. Remember. Uh, remember. Remember that. Oh, okay. All, all we say in another way is that how we can how can we ensure a causal relation in a Bayesian network. Uh, remember that we define the causal based on inter intervention. You know, we intervene something and say what's the effect on the other variables. Uh, so here, similar, uh, here, we also need a way to describe the effect of an intervention. And remember, we have two calculus, and in a and in a uh, graphical model, in this gra graphical way. Uh, a do calculus means that uh, here is an example. Let's say uh, suppose the original graph, the original uh, Bayesian network is uh, if this season can uh, season can points to rain points to uh, others. And suppose we uh, do we we have a do operator on the variable x three. Uh, then what what in this graphical way, what will happen is that we, uh, okay, we assign, we manually assign the value of x3 equals to the value we want. Suppose now it is on, um, and we, because we already, uh, uh, I mean, assign this, or we already intervene this variable, then all the input edges of this x3, we can remove it because it did, they will not work. We we have we have already assigned all the we have already assigned the values of three of x three to some specific value. Okay, this is the uh, you know the the graphical operation the graph the graphical interpretation of, of the do calculus. But uh, uh, okay, so this is only the like we can see the definition of the interpretation of do calculus and graphical model, uh, but uh, but what what kind of a Bayesian network or what prob prob what uh, properties should a Bayesian network hold that can e enable us to 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 infer you know to infer causal uh, in this graphical model in this Bayesian network? Uh, there are three conditions. Uh, okay, let, let's say. The variables we the variable set we want to observe is v, and uh, the we have we will do some intervention on the x on the node set x, uh, and we denote uh, this distribution as p uh, sub subscript x of v. Uh, so we, if a DAG g a general DAG a general Bayesian network g uh, is a causal Bayesian network or a causal graph. If only if uh, these three conditions hold. Okay, the first condition is that this distribution uh, is Markov re relative to G. So what does this mean? Actually, this is a very trivial um, condition. That it basically means that uh, this here the Markov means that uh, once we we intervene X. Okay, and we can have, you know, we 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 just like what 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 we uh, mentioned here. Uh, we remove all the uh, we we remove all the 
uh, in links and we assign the value of this x3. Uh, this is the intervention. And for, for oh, so we can have a new new graph. And this new graph actually is Markov relative to G means that there is no new edge in this, in this new graph. Means that if we change, uh, if we intervene on X3, then we will not, uh, it, we will not introduce some new edge in this in the original graph G. And this is the this is the Markov mean. So the reason why we have we want to have this condition is that you know you can imagine the if we can have some new let's say some new new edge, then we you know we change we even change the causal mechanism of the underlying variables. So we know that this is not a not what we want and it's not the causal mechanism work uh, so it is not how the the real causal mechanism work because you know you can you can imagine that in in real world if we change one thing and uh, we will not we will only see some some others happen following the causal mechanism but we will not create new causal mechanism so uh, uh that's the uh, the reason why we need this condition. And the second condition is also very trivial, uh, is that, uh, yeah, so here, because here the V is the, is all the, you know, the full variable set. So uh, if V, if VI is one of the variable we want to intervene, which is mean, which means that it, it is in the X set uh, and, if the uh, the value v i is the value x we assign to to this v i or to to this capital v i or to the capital x, uh, then this probability equals to one. Um, this just means the like the example here. If we set the x three equals to one, then we know that after we do this intervention, then all the x threes will equal in this new graph all the values of this x3 will equals to on, um, there's no off. So that's why the, uh, that's actually just the, you know, definition of the dual calculus. And here, uh, the, the, prob the probability is definitely one. So it's a trivial condition. Uh, for the third condition, uh, it is more mm, interesting is that uh, let's say for here, for all the variables that are not in the X set, X is the intervention set. If one variable is not the variable we want to intervene, then uh, the causal mechanism, here this probability, this conditional probability P of VI given uh, the parent of, of node I uh, means that uh, here, you know, if you can imagine, if it is a causal uh, graph, then uh, this this conditional probability v i given the uh, given the parents of i it basically means the what variables can cause v i. They are the parents, so this probability they are the causal mechanism of v i okay, because. VI is directly caused by all of its parents. So this conditional probability is the causal mechanism. Okay, and again, here VI is not in X. It's, for example, in this case, it could be X2, X1, X4, or X5. It's not in the X. It, 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 it is not X3. In that case, we can see, uh, for x1, x2, x4, x5, their, uh, their probability given their parents will not change after we intervene on x3. This is also, you know, this is also uh, consistent with what we have in this nature, the, or, or what we have in the causal, in the real causal mechanism. Let's say you, change, you intervene something, 
And uh, because you, you intervene some, you intervene X, then uh, the input, the index, the parents of X will, will, will be nothing because we already inter, intervene the X3. Uh, but for all the others, they, they will not be affected. Okay. Uh, even like the, the, the direct child of X3, the X4, it is the direct child of X3. Uh, okay, the distribution of, of X4 will change. However, the mechanism, the conditional distribution, X4 given X3 will not change. That's, that's the causal mechanism. So, uh, yeah, so we can see the here, here the difference is very local, it's only on X3. So uh, that's, that's the third, uh, yeah, the third condition. And for the, for the third condition, uh, there are, actually there are a lot of other names, like uh, some, some people will say the causal mechanism are modular. Uh, mo what we call modular is that, you know, for X again, it, it, it is because the, if we intervene on X3, the change will only happen on X3, but the, all the causal mechanism for, our, for other nodes will not be affected. So they, they are somehow independent. And uh, we can also say this is, there are a lot of uh, modules, modules in, this, in this whole causal model. So that's why they call it as modular. And if we uh, consider the modular uh, property, it will give us uh, it will give us more uh, interesting. Uh, okay, it, it can give uh, give us more interesting benefits. Like if we, we recall the Bayesian network factor factorization. Uh, okay, we can say for every uh, variable, we can just factorize it uh, with its, its parents. And here for for the uh, uh, if, if we have the modular uh, probability, uh, uh, if we have the modular property, then we know that we can have a new factorization, which is the uh, tr uh, tr 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 truncated, uh, truncated uh, factorization. Uh, actually, there's only one uh, difference, is that uh, this factorization is the fa fa factorization of uh, the Joint, probab joint probability given given our intervention. Okay, so here again, I, if I is not in the intervention set, then we we can uh, you know keep all the all the uh, factor you know the x i and a or its parents parents this conditional probability, and uh, uh, but if this is there's another condition is that if X is consistent with the intervention. Uh, otherwise, if it is not consistent with the intervention, we know that uh, just like the example we, we should hear, uh, if uh, the X is off, here we know that we our intervention is on. And if it is off, uh, and here we can see that the intervention of on is, prob the probability of intervention of on is one, then we know that uh, if it if it's off, then definitely the probability will be zero. Okay, uh, yeah, that, so that's why uh, we know that with this modular uh, property or and the, the two calculus, we know that the uh, the factorization for a two calculus uh, for for the probability for the joint probability give the, given the two calculus will become a uh, 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 Trun uh, trun truncated factorization, uh, which we only consider the i who is not in the uh, who is not in the the intervention set. This is different. This is different from the general Bayesian network factorization. Uh, okay, that's the the causal graphical model, or the obviously causal graph. Uh, but for causal graph, it cannot give us, uh, it, it, we can answer some question uh, based on the causal, causal uh, graph or causal, 
uh, graphical model or causal variation network. But uh, but it, it, if we want to, like uh, we will talk talk about it later. Uh, that in causal there are a lot of different level questions. But uh, uh, here let let first see. Mm, there's another more advanced model in uh, in causal is called the structure structural uh, causal models SCM. Uh, before before we define the structural causal models, uh, there is one definition is the structural equation. Uh, you know, uh, Yuda Pearl always say that uh, the E cosine does not contain any cosine information. Uh, like if we say B equals to A, then we can also say A equals to B because this equal is is uh, you know symmetric. Symmetric. Uh, but for but for in causal, we want to define you know in causal A cos B, then B cannot cause A. This is the this is not a symmetric, you know, equation. Uh, so here for the structural equation, we define it as we, we define it in this way. Suppose a cause a is a cause of b, then we define that uh, b. Okay, the, mm, I don't know how to read this symbol, but you know it's a structural equal uh, of a function of a. And this is what we observe. We can observe a and we can observe b. Then we can write down this. But uh, and if we only have this a and b, we don't consider the right part. Then this is a causal graph. Uh, but uh, causal graph only describe what we are what we can observe. And in, you can see in the underlying causal in the underlying causal mechanism, uh, it, it is very easy that we have we have some hidden uh, or un, unobserved variables. For example. If we want to know the, uh, let's say, uh, okay, uh, how the uh, attendance of a course of a class and the final GPA of that uh, of that uh, class, uh, the the attendance is A and the final GPA is B. Uh, and maybe there are other, uh, there are other. Uh, we know that if you go to Okay, we know that the attendance of a course can affect the GPA, the GPA of this course, but uh, there, there are also other factors that can, that can also affect the final uh, GPA. For example, how clever, how smart is this student? And suppose this, we cannot observe it and it is hidden, uh, but it, it will, if we want to model the real causal, causal effect of B, then we must, Take these hidden factors into consideration, uh, and uh, maybe we have a lot of such hidden variables. We just use a U to denote all those hidden uh, variables. It, it can be it, it models a, every uh, uh, unobserved factors in a causal in a causal model. Okay, and we can see if we define the B as a function of A. The observed and unobserved, then we know this is a uh, you know uh, this this can model the the real underlying uh, causal causal uh, causal mechanism. And actually, we can see the only difference between uh, yeah, and this is actually the structure the SCM the structural causal model. And we can see the only difference between SCM and the causal graph is the existence. It, or the consideration of this U, this un, uh, this hidden factors. Uh, there are there are some I, I won't say formal, but kind of a definition of SCM. Uh, okay, let's first say this. So this this graph, uh, and in this graph we have four observed variables A, B, C, D, and for B, C, D we have three. Uh, different, uh, we will have three uh, hidden uh, hidden variables. And uh, let's say for B, uh, this causal, this in this graph, uh, each edge is a causal relation. So we say for the variable B, uh, let's say the uh, causal mechanism is a function FB and the input we should consider A and also the 
uh, the uh, hidden hidden factor U B, and for C D, we also consider uh, those those uh, either uh, observed or hidden variables. Uh, so in this in this kind of graph, we uh, define we define variables like B C D as heterogeneous uh, uh, variables, which means that we want to model the causal mechanism or the generative process of those variables. And, and in this case, we only model B, C, D. So because A for variable A, there's no parent. So uh, B, C, D are uh, endogenous, uh, are heterogeneous variables. Okay, then, then this is the definition. Uh, and also for uh, for variables like A and U, B, U, C, U, D, they are they don't have any parents, and we call it as uh, the uh, exogenous variables in SCM. And also remember this M set. Uh, this M set is a set of uh, functions, causal functions of the uh, heterogeneous variables. So here comes here comes the. I don't, I don't, I won't say this is a formal NCM definition, but it's, it is a definition. Uh, so NCM uh, is a tuple of the following sets. The first set is the a set of endogenous variables, BCD, and the second is the set of uh, exogenous variables, A, U, B, U, C, and U, D, and then a set of functions, which is the M set here. And uh, uh, for each, for each uh, function, uh, it generates. It, it will generate the. It will generate one heterogeneous uh, variable, and uh, the generative function is. It's a function of other variables. It can be uh, like the, the other, uh, other in heterogeneous or uh, extra, exogenous. Uh, just follow the. The the. The, the, the this graph. So this is the definition of NCM. Uh, okay. John, I have some questions. Yes. Yeah. So is this function deterministic? Mm. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, first, you like the the variables. Uh, I mean, the variables like U B U C U D. They are random variables. That which means then the B C D are also random variables. So, you be, so the function could be deterministic, but the a function of random variable should still be random variable. Uh, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. The second question is like, uh, uh, who is the inventor of this SCM? Is uh, it, it's you that it's you that pro. Okay, I see. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, for this 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 page of slides, uh, I got from the secondary uh, reference reference, and uh, you can see it's not a very very formal definition. Uh, but uh, in Professor Zhang's slides, it uh, uh, for, about the definition of structural causal model. Uh, basically, they are the same thing. Like for for every x i, uh, we have we have a function of its parents and the hidden factor E and EI could be, uh, let's say, a, a variable, a exogenous variable and errors and maybe others. And oh, and this equation, and every equation uh, here, B, C, D, they are independent, they are autonomous. So this is consistent with the modular property, right? Every causal mechanism is independent. Is they are, they are, they are modular. Uh, like here, uh, yeah, because we can regard every, uh, we can re regard every uh, equation here as a causal mechanism, because it is the mechanism of how to generate B, C, and D. So they are causal mechanism. Yeah, and uh, uh, this structural causal models, it basically describes how the nature assign values to variables to, to the variables they are interested. And we, we will see a, a, an example later and that will tell, tell us 
uh, maybe we can have more uh, more sense of that. Uh, and this, this this distinguish between structure equation and the uh, algebra algebraic uh, equation is uh, we also talk it, talk it just now just symmetric and not and uh, not symmetric just then. Okay, that's the SCM. Uh, then uh, here comes to um, another interesting thing is the uh, three different level of problems in current AI. Uh, okay, let's first say this uh, graph is that uh, X1 is smoking and smoking can cause X2 yellow fingers and uh, smoking can also, can also uh, cause uh, cough, which is X3. Okay, and uh, we have three different levels of, of questions. The first one is prediction. Prediction, the typical question is something like, what would a person, uh, what would the person cough if we find that he or she has yellow fingers? Okay, so you can see this is what we, we always do in machine learning. We learn a, a conditional uh, probability, right? And then we based on this, and we, we based on the, our learned conditional probability, we do a prediction on a test set. That's the prediction. And we are very familiar of this because this is what machine learning do. Uh, the second level is uh, intervention. Uh, the, the intervention, uh, okay, let's, let's first say the, the typical question of intervention is that what would person cough if we make sure that she or he or she has yellow fingers? Here's the make sure, uh, the, the, the term make sure uh, has some confusion, but I checked the original uh, you know, explanation of Professor John, it definitely means that, uh, it, it basically means that the intervention somehow like we can make someone okay uh has a yellow figure has a yellow finger and let's say oh uh, what will uh would this person cough if we somehow make we intervene someone has a yellow finger okay uh if we write down in uh in in, in formalization then this is equivalent to uh, this is actually the do Okay, and the third level is the counterfactual. Actually here, uh, you know, because this is uh, related to my research and previously I, I have a discussion with Professor Sun about the difference between intervention and counterfactual. And we, we thought that, okay, um, I, we don't know the exact difference between those two different level questions. But now I think I have a bit, uh, maybe a good explanation. Uh, okay, let, let's say counterfactual. Let's first say the typical question of counterfactual. Here, there are a lot of uh, conditions. First, let's say this question, would George cough? Okay, here, George means that we already know it is a specific unit or specific person, uh, maybe unit because it, more gen it is more general. Uh, would George cough had he had yellow fingers? given that he doesn't have yellow fingers and uh, he coughs. It's something like, some, something like that we already observe some evidence and we, ob we have some observation and this observation could be a condition if we write down in a formula like, like here, the yellow, the, this one. Uh, and given this condition, we want to do an intervention on on some value, some variable here is x2. So here the intervention is part of counterfactual. You know, because previously uh, Professor Sun and I, we, we think that, okay, for interventions is something, you want to predict, predict the intervention is something like we have some of the observation from let's say other units or from the history of this unit and then we can see, we can imagine, okay, if I intervene, uh, I intervene uh, one variable and what will happen? Uh, we thought that that was intervention, but actually that is 
is counterfactual, is, is a typical counterfactual prediction. Okay, and uh, uh, for intervention, it is very, it's, it's, you can say it is a very general, it is a very general question, something just like, I can don't, I, I don't, I don't need to have any observation. I don't need to have any, uh, any evidence, something like what we have in the counterfactual. We only want to know what will happen if I change, change X2. Okay, here, UDAPR also has another two explanations about the intervention uh, to, to maybe, maybe be, it is useful for us to understand. Uh, the first is that, Intervention is how little baby learn this word. Something like it, because for little baby, he doesn't know anything. He doesn't know, they don't have any evidence. Uh, the baby can try something which is an intervention and they will know, okay, what, uh, what will happen. Yeah, and then they will, they will know, okay. Uh, yeah, they, 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 they will, they will, uh, yeah, they will learn something. Uh, that is different from prediction because prediction is I just see some history, historical and I learn some conditional probability from the historical and then I just use that learned conditional probability. I don't try anything new. Uh, yeah, that, so, so, but for, for little baby, then they try something because you say they try whether Okay, a fire is hot, so I don't want to touch the fire again, something like this. And uh, that's the first explanation of intervention. And secondly, uh, Yuda Pro said, you know, because Yuda Pro, he always uh, you know, say machine learning is not a real AI because it cannot, cannot you know, capture the causal stuff. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's one person ask him, uh, so which these three levels, uh, let's say prediction is one, intervention is two, and the counterfactual is three. Uh, because so there's, there's someone ask you, you, you that, uh, do you think uh, the current machine learning is only the first level, only prediction? You know, per first answer, yes. And secondly, he changed his mind, said, Consider, considering A-B test, and reinforcement learning, I would say the current AI, the current machine learning is 1.5. <laughs> it's in the 1.5 level. So the interesting point is the reinforcement learning. Because you know, in reinforcement learning, what we do is that we, we have a, an environment which can always give us some feedback. Then so we have an agent, and this agent can take some action. The take the this you know, this process takes some action to the environment. Basically, it's very similar, like the little baby try to touch the fire. So it is intervention. And uh, because in reinforcement learning, we have, a, we have an environment and this environment, you know, it, it can always give us some uh, feedback, either the reward or the state or maybe others. Uh, but uh, the point is in reinforcement learning, we can do intervention. And uh, maybe this intervention is not exactly the same of the definition of intervention in causal, but uh, it already, it still, it, it is already very close than the, let's say, supervised learning. Uh, yeah, so, so that point, but when you do this intervention, let's say in reinforcement learning, you cannot, maybe you don't need to have any other previous uh, historical rec records. You don't, need, you don't need to have a lot of observed observe, observe data. You just, you know, try, try, try. And then uh, you can get some, some, some feedback. And that's the intervention. And for counterfactual, so, so here, maybe the, I, I think the difference between counterfactual and intervention is uh, is much clear because previously we maybe we thought an intervention 
okay, we, we solved a counterfactual problem as a intervention problem by mistake, but actually once we have some observation and based on those observation and we, uh, we do some intervention and see what will happen. This is already the kind of factual and again, and this process is for a specific unit. Okay. Yeah, that's the difference between intervention and the kind of factual. Uh, Professor Sun, do you think this explanation is clearer than our pre previous discussion? Yeah, I think it's explained. So the counterfactual prediction essentially is based on some new observations, right? So it's like, mm -hmm. it's kind of intervention given some context. Right. But for intervention only, there's no context at all. Yeah, it's a very general. It's, it's very general because uh, let's just say the machine learning model cannot do this intervention, like supervised learning, I would say. Uh, so that's the difference. I, I believe the, the point is to distinguish from distinguish intervention from the prediction problem. But, but actually what we, we have discussed before, they are, they are already counterfactual problem. Hey, okay. uh, so, yes. Uh, do you mind me adding something like about counterfactual? Of course. Okay. Yeah, so the way I, I find counterfactual to be prevalent is in like mediation analysis, basically uh, where you have like a causal graph that looks like this. Uh, if you can look at the chat, you have like A to B to C, where B is the mediator, and A and C, you assume there is another uh, you know, causal link between them. So that uh, when you want to study the effect of the mediation on the effect or the, uh, you know, the link between the, the treatment A to the effect, you can use counterfactual reasoning by uh, intervention on, the, on A, but you keep the mediator B to be the value before the intervention. So, so basically my understanding about the counterfactual given a causal diagram is that your intervention on some parent node, uh, that's the assumption to be a cause, but then you fix all the downstream, like, uh, you know, like the mediators or stuff that's up, uh, children nodes of these parents, some of them to be uh, to be the value before the treatment. So that is like the what if, you know, what if this uh, intervention didn't happen, then we assume that the, dance, the, the, the child node, the, the mediator would stay the same value. And then we can, uh, this is actually uh, what we, uh, so and I, we were like reading some papers in uh, the, the use of causal inference in computer vision is that Normally people do this and then they do a subtraction between these two. Uh, and then you get uh, the, some of the, uh, like the effects collect, uh, for example, the, the natural direct effect or the total indirect effect so that you can, uh, you know, separate out different uh, causal links uh, to, the, to the result. You know, like you can separate out, for example, the two links that I wrote, ABC and AC you can study them individually. That's like the context that I, uh, you know, that I find counterfactual to, to, be, uh, uh, to be reasonable. And another example I can give is, uh, it's actually from the book of Y by Yula Pearl. Like, I think it's like a chapter, the chapter on counterfactual, the first quote is like, uh, it's about the history, it's like, had the nose of uh, Cleopatra be shorter, the whole face of the world would have been changed. So if you know a little bit about history, it's basically similar to a novelist writing a, like a fiction of uh, alternate history, right? You try to say that, what if something, a condition that is, is different, then what would happen? So in this case, uh, Caesar, you know, like the, the dictator of Rome, he basically uh, tried to conquer Egypt but when he saw Cleopatra, the, uh, I, I don't know, it's like a queen or empress, but you know, like the, the ruler of Egypt, he changed his mind because 
he was so attracted to Cleopatra's nose or uh, uh, Caesar's ghost, and then he, he decided to be an alliance with uh, Egypt. So if you are writing a uh, history, like alternate history, and you change that condition, you change, you intervene on Cleopatra's nose and you say, okay, what if we change the nose to be like a very small one? But we still have like keep other variables the same. You know, we still say Caesar likes big nose. Caesar doesn't like small nose. Then what would happen? And it's very likely that Caesar would decide to conquer Egypt instead of being forming alliances with Egypt. So that's another example. <laughs> okay. Oh. Uh yeah, thanks, Fred. Because uh, recently, uh, Fred and and I we are uh, reading, reading some papers, and there are, there's a line of research I'm trying to, you know, uh, yeah, use the use the uh, the uh, subscri subscribe up between two D two effect to to somehow uh, get get some um, effect of, of you know, some, some, um, how say, uh, yeah, but anyway, uh, maybe, maybe Fred is, is more familiar um, than me for, for, for that part. Uh, okay, uh, anyway, uh, thanks, Fred. Uh, okay. Oh, and yeah, and these three level questions, uh, these three level problems, they are, you, you don't probably use it, describe it as a causal ladder. Okay. Okay, here is one uh, simple example of the counterfactual uh, prediction uh, and uh, the difference between counterfactual and prediction. But here, but here uh, suppose we, we know that the underlying causal is X can cause Y and to, the causal mechanism, okay, we write down as uh, as this. Now we already suppose we we already know this causal mechanism, and uh, uh, x uh, plus e plus three. Let's see. Oh, uh, here the e uh, again is the hidden factors, just the hidden factors we just use in the SCM model. Uh, let's say x is the attendance attendance, and y a, y is the uh, let's see what why is the GPA of, of a course and uh, E is uh, let's say how smart is this student uh, okay and uh, suppose now uh, th this this scatters are all the data points and, uh, and all the data data X and Y the data pairs we have uh, and uh, here this X and Y is what we have we observe that for, for one student and this student, uh, the X is, is a value like here and the Y, the y value is something like here. And uh, this is what we observed. And given this observation, given, the, given this evidence, we want to know, suppose this student, okay, his X, his, suppose he improves his attendance rate of the class, what will happen for his GPA? in this course. If we do it in a machine learning way, then because we don't we, we cannot observe the uh, the E, right? Uh, so here in, if we are maybe not machine learning but in a general prediction way, what we can do is we learn the we learn the relation uh, between Y and X. And uh, uh, for example when someone get an uh, X as X prime, which is all the data here, then maybe we can just, re for prediction, for simple prediction, we can just return the average Y for all the data who has X prime in the training set. And then, which is the red, which is the red uh, here, which is the red, red point. And we use this as a prediction. However, Oh, however, if we know that the real, so the real may not be the average, we need to consider some, maybe just like a feature, but here is the E of this, of this uh, particular student. 
it's somehow like the counter factual given this particular unit we want to if we have some observation and we want to intervene intervene something what will happen for the outcome uh, then the, oh yes that this is the uh the, the question uh, yeah I, I just mentioned then we have some uh evidence and we have some intervention what will happen for the why uh and there are three uh, steps for the counterfactual in inference. The first one is that we uh, here, uh, oh, here they use a different notation. Here, the ux actually is the e we have in the in, in the previous equation. And uh, uh, the first the first step is that we want to somehow infer the the u the or the e the hidden uh, factors use what we observe the evidence. And second is that after doing that, we just replace our x with our new, our intervention uh, x, and then do the prediction. Uh, go back to this example. Uh, these three steps will be, you know, for, for the first, we know that we need to somehow infer e. Then, uh, but this is a simple example. We already know the, the equation of this, this causal mechanism. So, uh, the first one is we can just you know calculate e and then we replace x by x prime and then com compute a new y. That's the uh, you know that's the counterfactual kind of counterfactual inference. So again, here uh, we know that uh, the di the difference the the other difference between intervention and the counterfactual is the consideration of e of the hidden factors. This is, this is another uh, difference between intervention and the counterfactual. Okay, that's the uh, SCM and the counterfact and the different levels of causal problems. Uh, finally is that, again, for causal inference, we, 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 why we want to build this model? Because we want to estimate, we want to infer the effect of one intervention of one, uh, we do something different on, on one variable, then we want to know the effect of this intervention. Uh, so this is called causal, inference, uh, causal effect. So what is causal effect? Causal effect basically means that we, fox, we uh, fix all the other things and we only see uh, because, for example, we want to know the effect, the causal effect of x on y. Uh, we fix all the other variables and we just change x and see what will happen on y. And this is the causal effect. Okay. And this is the formal definition, but it's basically you know, describe what I just mentioned. Uh, you know, for for uh, for uh, uh, for causal effect, we want if we want to identify uh, the causal effect, we need to make sure that the causal effect itself it is identifiable. Uh, in causal, in, uh, and first we denote this causal effect as use the do calculus, which is the uh, conditional prob probability conditional probability given the do calculus, uh, and if this causal effect is identifiable, uh, which means that, so the definition is something like, suppose we have two different models and these two different models, causal model, these two different causal models, they can, they have the same causal structure, the, like, like the, 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 uh, the graph here, the same causal structure, which we just regarded as called uh, SCM or something. And, uh, we have the same distribution of the observed variables. And then if we have two models like this, they have the same causal structure and the same uh, distribution. Will the effect be the same? If they are the, the same, then, I mean, the, the causal effect given by these two, two models, they are the same. This means that the causal effect is identifiable. So actually, the identifiable basically means that your causal effect is stable. So uh, you can always 
predict the, the, the stable thing. Otherwise, if it, it is random, then how can you do the uh, prediction or how can you do the identi ident identification? So this is, you know, make their, uh, make their theory very, mm, you know, very, very strong. Uh, so, so how can we do, uh, you, yeah, uh, under, under this identif identification, how can we infer the causal effect? The best way, maybe the ran randomized control experiments, uh, yeah, actually A-B test is kind of such experiments. Basically, it means that we uh, fix and we make all the other things the same. This is the random, where, where the random come from. Uh, we control all the others and they are the same. Oh, and we only change the the xi, for example, here. And let's see what will happen on the x3. Uh, suppose we want to know the x2, the causal effect of x2 on x3. Mm. If we can do this randomized control experiments, then definitely we can know the real causal effect of x2. However, uh, you know, if everything is such is so easy like this, then uh, People don't need to do a lot of tough things uh, because you know such experiments are not always doable. So um, people also need to infer the causal effect from the observational data, not doing new experiments, just infer the causal effect from the obs observational data. Uh, so here, let's go back to the the, uh, the previous example we, ju we, we just used. Oh, uh, yeah, and uh, so here again, let's go back to the intervention and and not in, in intervention. Let's go back to the 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 conditional probability and the the causal effect. Why why this p of r given t here t is the treatment and r is the recovery. Uh, so why this simple conditional this probability will not uh, we cannot use this. As, as the causal effect, but we need to, we, but we need to use the 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 do calculus. Uh, the reason, uh, if we go back to this example, uh, yeah, maybe we can see see this way. Uh, yeah, in 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 this small stones group, and in this uh, large stone group, uh, here uh, the x. The x axis, the x uh, axis means the treatment A and treatment B, and the uh, y axis is the uh, recovery rate. Uh, and we, we we write them down. If we use let's say if we use the uh, the simple conditional probability, it will have the uh, the mistake we just mentioned that we can see the average uh, treatment of uh, the average recovery rate of treatment B is higher than A. But uh, which, which we know it, it is wrong because the confounder, the, ex the existence of the confounder. So here, and we know that if we can do, you know, if we can do uh, in each group, okay, we can, we can do in each group, then, uh, we know that we can get a correct answer. And here, uh, the do calculus, how to, cal how to calculus this do operator, this do calculus. Uh, there are two uh, inter interpret, there are two interpretations. But here, we, if we just say this one, uh, intuitively, intuitively, then we know that we need to consider, we need to condition on each uh, stone size group, and then within each group, we we do the we do the uh, you know uh, the conditional prob the conditional probability like what we uh, do just now of the R and T. And if we condition on each group, then uh, we can get such a uh, uh, this gr this green uh, two points, and you can see. 
they are, they are correct. And this is also consistent with our intu intuition is that we need to, we need to uh, do this uh, probability within each different uh, group of the stone size. Okay, so here uh, up now we just follow the in in intuition and uh, we, we know that we need to condition on this uh, we need to condition on this uh, stone size group. Okay. Uh, another another example is something like this: is the ex exercise and the uh, uh, co co colors colors. Uh, anyway, uh, is this uh, is a metric of basically is a is a metric of, of healthy. Uh, okay. Let, let's say uh, if we don't consider the H group, we can see uh, the Y exercise, the Y value is larger with the uh, increase of the exercise. Okay. Uh, but if we consider the H, H group, okay, if we consider H, H, H group, we, can, we will have a totally different observation, which means that if we, you have more exercise, then this y uh, value will become smaller. Okay. So why we have this kind of paradox because the age is a uh, calendar. It, it is uh, exactly the same with our previous example. Okay. Uh, so here again, previously we know that the uh, conditional on each group is our intuition, but uh, how do we? How can we uh, calculate in a form, form, form uh, a formal way? Uh, the first we need to first uh, introduce something. The first one is the this separation, but I uh, I believe everyone has already very familiar with this because we have mentioned this uh, in this course. Uh, maybe not not just one, maybe several times. I, I remember. Uh, so I will not cover it here. Uh, but uh, the interesting thing is the backdoor uh, criterion. Uh, okay, let's say the backdoor criterion is proposed by Professor Yuda Pearl. Uh, and uh, it is on, uh, let's say, on a, on a deck. Okay, uh, suppose our interest is the causal effect of xi on xj. Okay. So, so first, a, a set of variables z. If a z, uh, th this set of variables z uh, satisfies the backdoor criteria, then uh, oh, uh, so what kind of z can uh, satisfy the backdoor criteria? The criteria? Uh, there are two conditions. The first one is that uh, there's no, the z or the, there's no node in the z set is a uh, child of xi, let's say like here the x6, x6 cannot in z. The second, z blocks, this block, first this block means the this, this separation. This z blocks every path between x and, and x, xi and xj, and those paths uh, can take an arrow into xi. The, the example is something like here, xj, x4, x1, x3, xi. This is a path and has an arrow to xi. Uh, if the node set z can block all those paths, then and uh, node node z is a child of xi, then we know uh, this kind of z set is a. Uh, we, we see this set z uh, satisfies the backdoor uh, criterion. Uh, uh, the example here is that x3, x4 could be such a set, and x4, x5 could be such a set, but x4 itself cannot be such a set because if we only can, we only have x4, there is another path xj, x5, x2, x4, x, uh, x1, x3, xi. This m shape path is not blocked because here x4 is a uh, collider. Uh, okay, and if we can have such a z, uh, su such a set z, then 
we can uh then we can you know if infer the causal effect based on the backdoor uh, adjustment the backdoor adjustment is something you can say it's exactly the same if, uh, with our intuition our intuition on of on conditional on the uh the stone size group the only difference is that here the pz okay we know that we should condition on every z and this z uh should be the node set that uh satisfies the backdoor criterion so so maybe uh there are, before you that pro proposed this backdoor adjustment actually there are some similar research already somehow proposed the the uh a very similar thing just like what what i call uh intuition that it's just very easy to understand in that example but here the general case is that how do you know which kind of variables you should conditional on because in the previous uh, example we, we know there's only one variable one factor is the stone size but here in a general case what should, what kind of variables you should conditional on that's the z set and the z set should satisfy the backdoor criterion that that's the uh, backdoor adjustment the the correctness of this backdoor uh or not the, the interpretation of this backdoor adjustment we can just regard it as uh we can use this exactly same understanding of the previous example okay uh okay there's there's there's, there's uh uh maybe an extension uh is that about the condition but maybe it's not very important here is that uh you know if we want to consider, uh, I mean, if we want to conditional on C, then uh, this C, you know, it could be, because C could be a very high, high it, it can contain a lot of variables, so it could be a high dimensional, which means that you can, it, it would, if we want to condition on, on a very high dimensional uh, variable or set, then, you know, you need to do a lot of computation and it could be, even very harder. So there is a way to reduce such computation and it is equivalent is use the propensity score. The propensity score is, let's say the H, the H uh, is defined as the probability of, uh, again, here, uh, here our interest is the effect of X on Y and C here is uh, we, we can know that in this causal graph C is the only variable we showed, uh, is the only variable that uh, satisfies the backdoor criteria. Okay, so here uh, the propensity score is defined uh, of the probability, the probability of Xi equals to one given the, 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 the variable set that satisfies the backdoor criteria. Okay. Uh, so, in, in, in practice, we can just use, for example, use a logistic reg regression, and uh, you know we can do this uh, transformation from C to the probability of x equal to one. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, here we reduce the high dimensional to just one scalar. Uh, yeah, and uh, we can see, uh, given this edge. X and C, they become uh, conditionally independent because, because you, you can just imagine that, okay, just let's say this one, but because H is a probability of X equals to one given C. So we can just put this node here. Uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, this one, uh, you know, Y is a, is a, is a uh, glider here and X, uh, I mean, the edge here is the only uh, variable that can be separate C and X. So given X, given H, then X and C, they are independent. Uh, in this case, we call that the, we can, we can uh, prove that H and C, they are equivalent in this backdoor uh, adjustment. Uh, 
the proof is something like here. Uh, still very uh, simple. Uh, basically, this is our original uh, backdoor criteria on C, condition on C. And uh, uh, yeah, we just, uh, we just uh, use the total uh, probability to add H and then add H to, yeah, to make the P of C to P of H times P of C given it. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, and then there's two uh, interesting thing is then let's first say this one, P of C given H, uh, in case P of C given H win and for X, we know that the given H, we just mentioned that given H, C and X, they are independent. So we can uh, add X here. And similarly, let's say the Y and the H, let's say uh, in this color graph, for C and X, given the given the uh, given the uh, yeah, we, we can see C and X. This set already D separate D separ separates the H and Y. So H and Y becomes they become independent given C and X. That's why we can add the H here. And by by this, if we use the chain rule, then we can. Uh, we can uh, shrink the, or not shrink, we can combine the, the, uh, the first term and the, the third term to something like this. And if we take the summation, then this C will equal to one. So we, have, we will have something like this. Uh, then we can see uh, the original backdoor, backdoor adjustment will, equal to, will be equal to, uh, to, 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 con to conditional on H. That means that uh, the H and the C, they are equivalent in this backdoor adjustment. And that's just a, a way, a trick maybe to, to you know, to, if your, your, condition, your condition C is very hard to, quantitate, to, quantitate, to calculate, calculate, then uh, you can just use this preference score. Okay. Okay, uh, another very important contribution of UDAP Pro is the front door criteria. This one is, mm, is a little tricky. Uh, let's first see what is the, uh, okay, what is the front door criteria? Uh, we have a variable set Z and uh, this Z satisfy, uh, satisfies front door criteria if there are three conditions. The first one is that Z, okay, cuts all directed paths from X to Y, because X, X, uh, we're still interested in X effect on Y. Okay, here we know that Z can cut all the direct paths from X to Y. And the second, there is no backdoor path from X to Z. Okay, let's say this one. Uh, we always, we, suppose we always have the unobserved confounder U here. Okay, uh, and then uh, from X to Z, there's only one path, and uh, uh, this path uh, from, oh yeah, uh, this path is, uh, let's see. Uh, Right, all the from, uh, okay, uh, okay, there's something, uh, I, I forgot why the second second condition. Uh, but anyway, let's first see the third third condition. For the all the backdoor paths from Z to Y are blocked by X. But there's only one, there is only one uh, path, which is the Y to U to X to Z. And Z is, uh, uh, Z is, uh, uh, you know, uh, is one, one kind of the, uh, this separation. So we know that X blocks the, the path. So the third one, uh, holds. Uh, so of course the second one, but anyway, uh, let's first put it here. Uh, then for the front door adjustment, 
uh, yeah, the, the, the do calculus is, is calculated by something uh, like this. Then how, how, how do we get this? Uh, actually, it's still, we start from the backdoor criteria and we write down something like this. But we know that in this cause of our U is the only uh, variable we need to conditional on for the backdoor criteria. Uh, and to here, we uh, use the total uh, probability uh, to extend, to add Z here. Uh, and we uh, extend this, the first term uh, and add, add Z, then we, we know that we can uh, have this. Uh, and and this giving us to uh, let's say suppose the the front door front door uh, yeah suppose the front door uh, criteria uh, holds then let's say first say this one um, given given x z and u let's say given x z and u there's no uh, right there's no uh, yeah, because X can separate X and uh, Z and U, right? So Z and U, they are independent. So we can add U, uh, we can remove U here. And for for this one, given Z and U, okay, given, given Z and U, we know that X and Y, they are also independent. So here we can remove X, uh, then we can get such an equation. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, here, uh, if we check the first term and the third term and uh, plus this uh, sigma u, then we know it is a backdoor criteria. Okay, then we can, re we can you know, rewrite it as a, 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 a do, a do uh, calculus, something like this. And then uh, uh, if we, you know, Right, because here, uh, in, in, in this case, uh, what we can observe is, is, is x. We can also uh, use x as a backdoor criteria, so we can, you know, just extend this uh, to do calculus. Use x prime, and actually, x prime is uh, another. It's still x, but just you know, in, in two different conditions. So uh, here. Uh, we can get something like this. And then this is the, the formula of the front door adjustment. And this is another uh, huge contribution of U dot pro. Uh, but, but up to here, it's still maybe not that uh, uh, clear wh why this can, uh, why the, this front door can uh, make the causal effect ident identifiable. Uh, so here is one, uh, one straight intuitive explanation and one example. Uh, because in this causal graph, we know that the causal effect of X and Z, it is identifiable, right? And uh, uh, for, for Z and Y, we, if we just use the backdoor uh, criteria, it's, it is also, uh, identifiable because we can only condition our X to do, to do that. And in this causal graph, we know that the only effect X can have on Y is through this Z, this variable Z. So, which means that, uh, which, means, which means that this, you know, X can, X, uh, the causal effect between X and Z and between Z and Y, they are both identifiable and uh, the only causal effect X can have on Y is through this Z. So we know that we, if those two are identifiable, then the X to Y is identifiable. But this is just an intuitive way to understand it. But there is another example to, uh, there is another example to, to help us to understand the front door uh, criteria is that suppose X is smoke and suppose Y is the cancer Okay, uh, if we don't if we don't observe any other variables, we just have x and x and y. You know, we know that we cannot the causal effect between smoke and cancer is not identifiable. However, if we have some knowledge, and suppose this this knowledge is true, 
the knowledge is that the smoke, the smoke X affects the cancer Y only by the amount of tobacco tar in a person's lung. Uh, and uh, the amount of tobacco tar in lung is the variable Z. That means, you know, if, if a person smoke, then it will have some to tobacco tar in his or her lung. Uh, and if there are some tobacco tar in a person's lung, then we know that uh, this person is easy to get can cancer. Okay, and uh, our knowledge, suppose our knowledge is true. Our knowledge is that this is the only way that smoke can, smoke can uh, affect the, 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 the cancer by this amount of tobacco, tobacco uh, tar. Then uh, we can draw, draw a causal graph something like this. And uh, by doing this, we can know, uh, we, we know that the smoke and uh, cancer the air cover effect becomes uh, identifiable. But that's the another intuitive understanding of front door criteria. But basically, either back door or criteria or, or front door, uh, just based on you know you have the SCM right here. Uh, you you have this 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 uh, SCM and then conditional on your your case if you find front door is easy to use in this in this case or you find front or back door or front door which one is easier to use then you just use it and the, all the conditionals hold then you can just use it that's all uh, just two different way to get the causal effect okay uh, i think that's all of my presentation uh, is there any question Thank you, Song. So for the back door and the front door criteria, are they used to solve the same problem? Also the same question? Yes, they are both used to uh, calculate the, uh, this probability of y given uh, do x. So they are, they are both uh, used to compute the causal effect. So then in practice, because it seems to me like the back door criteria is more popular, right? In right. practice, uh, are there any difference, or it's like it's just a by chance that uh, people tend to use backdoor criteria more? Oh, actually, in practice, this just uh, regarding you know whether your your condition holds. If like like your if your uh, for example, if our observation is only x, z, and y, we don't we we cannot observe the the u here. Which means that we cannot use the backdoor criteria. We can only use the front. Door. I see. So they are yeah. applicable at different scenarios. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is there any other question? Okay, uh, if no, uh, thanks everyone. And that's all of today's uh, reading group. Thank you, so. And thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.